start uh, streaming on um, YouTube. But in the meantime, um, we can still uh, keep talking as the audience joins us. And um, I will uh, let them on. Let me just see live on YouTube. I need to make sure I've got the right account. And uh, that one. So Ivor, um, the that conference that you attended, the JConf, right? They told me at the time that I had to help them man the stand. And what they didn't tell me is that they're going to give me 50 vouchers to give out swag. Yeah. They did tell the rest of the people that were attending that session that I, they were going to get swag. I've never been so stressed around some swag giving. I literally had maybe about 80 people swarm me for the swag there. And I had to quickly kind of work out what to do and everything like that. Digital swag is worse than in-person swag. In-person swag is, here's a shirt, go away. The mm. other swag is, I, I have an email address. I have uh, you know, uh, a name and everything like that. Please create a special channel for me and go give me that tiny uh, you know, a voucher and then assign it and track it in an Excel spreadsheet. We had it good before COVID. Oh eh? Yeah, the and, and, and the best good. part of it is that when I got the voucher from you, I went into the store and I ordered my a, a nice Azure Cloud fanny bag. And, and it was yeah, mailed uh, home to me uh, last week. And I had to pay eight euros in customs to get it in. <laughs> I had to pay the eight euros to get an Azure fanny bag. So, so when I come back to Johannesburg to meet you, I, I expect some, some special treatment. Eight euros is about a thousand rand. <laughs> We can buy you a very good steak for eight euros. <laughs> I know. I don't think they realized that the shipping was included with it. But what do you do? So we also had a session where we gave out uh, Netflix vouchers or Uber Eats vouchers. And we gave them out in the hundreds to people who are, are attending, right? And then they tell me afterwards, oh, yeah, it's only for US citizens. So literally, all of these guys, there's nothing they can do with them. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Um, let me see if I can figure out how many please people Please tweet me are... when you get that fanny bag. Just tweet me. And tweet me about the $8, please. I want to retweet that. <laughs> yeah. Eight, Eight, euros. Take a Eight, Eight euros. Eight euros. <laughs> Eight euros. <laughs> but your, your company is very dear to us, so let's not aggravate them too much, though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to see if I can see the the live stream on here, there we are. And I think I've now just doubled the audience. So- um, Two people. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to tweet this and uh, I just need to choose the right account and say we're live. So, um, I don't know what your experience is around the world, but the audience, I, I would have expected a bigger online audience usually, but the online audiences are actually smaller than the in-person audiences. We should, we should send pizza vouchers because otherwise we just don't get the people here. It depends what they're, what they're trying to do. If it's for an entertainment purpose or alternatively it's for uh, like schooling or mandatory. So for example, I did a session recently on... Uh, a government initiative called One Million Arab Coders. There, 25, there were 25,000 people on the yes. sessions that I did. Um, we, we did Microsoft Build. There were 2 million people online. Wow. Wow. Yeah, the, the Spring One session that I did, uh, we had 2,000 2, people. I did a little Code Spaces session, like Code Spaces, you know, Visual Studio Code. We had two and a half thousand live things. So I, I think it depends. If you go in after the the youthful kind of uh, you know audience, the, the 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 audience that really is focused on career building, 
um, and and kind of uh, uh, around uh, scholarly activities. Yes, I think there's a huge audience out there uh, right there. But um, but and but other other audiences also a little bit as you progress a little bit older, you'll find that the time slot is important. Like now, mm. this time slot here, uh, the people who want to hear us. Yeah, it's one. It's dinner time. It's family time. So they'll watch the recording or they'll 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 engage it just because you know they're at their 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 um, their milestone of their lives where they you know they uh, have kids. Well, we've got two people on board: uh, Andre van der Berg and Nico Slebus. So they are definitely South Africans. Um, Maybe that we'll two report. is two million. Maybe it's the number the K is missing. <laughs> also remember that we changed the time an hour earlier. I don't know if everybody. Yes, we usually you know, we usually that also took an me, hour later. That took me also a little bit. I was like, but that's whiskey mm. time. <laughs> Six to seven is the 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 the, the Jamison and ice time, um, and then then I can kind of work in some. Other things after then, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me have a look here. How many? Ah, oh, we've got more people watching. Um, and um, but like, like also, uh, we we had a hackathon that we did on the Microsoft Facebook site. Now Microsoft Facebook has fourteen million mm, people, that's on and we had we had about a, a couple of hundred people. Uh, online on the, the hackathon, but we didn't have the full 14 million, uh, which, you know, I don't tell my wife, I told the 14 million. Um, she thinks <laughs> I'm a rock star. But <laughs> I think there is an, uh, just an oversubscription to a lot of media platforms. And as a result, like I'm now, I have like uh, an Instagram account. I don't even know what, in, what to do with it. Like I have to take pictures of my food. So like I'm taking pictures of like, you know, house stuff, like my dog and food. And then I place it there and then, and then like 30 people go, yay. And I'm like, what just happened? Well, try Jakarta E. What I don't want to do. Yeah, yeah. So what, I, what I don't want to do is Facebook. Oh my gosh, that place is weird. Just weird. It is, it is, I don't know. It's like if you have some kind of weird mental nuance to you, then you find your way to Facebook. That's that's just w what you what you are. It's like a it's like a like a magnet for weird thoughts and feelings. The best is LinkedIn because it's just you can't really do anything. Like, look at me. I have posted something work related. Here it is on LinkedIn. All you work related people, give me a thumbs up. Great. We are all professional. Thank you very much. Compared to Facebook, is he has a cat eating something, <laughs> maybe a dog, and it's QAnon on with like some conspiracy theory with some housewives. It's just so weird. And half the world's on it right now. What are they doing with their lives? What are they doing with their time that they're doing this and they're just consuming this weirdness? They should rather come to a Microsoft product like Yammer. Not really. It, no. Is Yammer still alive? It is, hey, unfortunately. Um, it is, but we have something better called Kazela. So Kazela is like Yammer, except it's, uh, it's like Teams. So it's encrypted, it's safe, it's secure, and it's more aligned, and you can, you can get it in your local network. Yammer seems to, and Yammer and Drop Wizard, remember Drop Wizard, right? So they've stopped developing Drop Wizard, unfortunately. Uh, I found that out recently. So the last time they did there was like six, seven months on the GitHub uh, repo. It's not being actively, uh, and, and Drop Wizard was Yammer, if I remember correctly. So if your framework for your company is not being actively uh, rendered, that's an immediate, like, you know, death, death, in the, uh, death nail to the coffin. Like if suddenly React stopped working, half the, the world would stop working because half of Azure is written in React. So yeah, if you're listening to this, um, Facebook, don't don't take away React, please. We need it. 
Angular, you can take Angular. Yeah, we can. You can take it. It's fine. We can. I think the world's moved on from Angular. So tell me, tell me, what's news in Eclipse? How's Mark? I haven't seen Mark. Mark Mossel. Oh God, I can't pronounce his surname. I haven't seen him tweet in a while though. From the Eclipse Foundation. No, maybe, maybe he hasn't been active on Twitter. I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't seen him. He used to be when it was doing that conversion. He was a god. Everyone looked to him for personal salvation. When the, we were doing that, you know, the transfer from Jakarta to Java EE. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was that was big. And then I just just can't. I, yeah, nothing nothing happened after that. But it's all right. We uh, I don't know if you're aware, Aver, but we got uh, J Boss EAP on Azure. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah, it's like I got it working and I was like, this doesn't feel right. I'm like <laughs> running EAP in Azure on a cloud on Microsoft Cloud using my Mac and I'm a Java developer. Yeah. I go, whoa, this is, you know, like when you wake up, you don't know whether you're sleeping or, or awake and you get like that grogginess and everything. Yeah. It was like that. I'm like, are you actually. And it's all written in React. Yes, yes, it's all written in React. <laughs> Um, and then we've got Open Liberty coming out soon uh, in, in Microsoft. Yeah. So we're also going to do that for, uh, we've had Wildflower for a while, but uh, Open Liberty, we've had, I uh, uh, don't know about WebSphere. I can't, I can't yeah, we understand. have WebLogic as well, don't you? Yeah, we do have WebLogic, but those are IaaS, those are infrastructure as a service offerings. You have the VMs though. The JBoss one is just, it's a PaaS offering. So I've got all of these EAP uh, quick starts, which I haven't touched in years, which were just so delicious. You know, like, you know, like all of the, the, the ones that I, I, I cut my teeth on that I did JBoss Forge and everything like that. And I want to just put them all in there, yeah. obviously not pay for them, but just put them all in there and just get them running and, and do sessions in them. Because I, I spent like five years of my life in JBoss land, five years in, in uh, WebSphere, five years in WebLogic, Five years in JBoss, literally five years of each of the big vendors I spent time <laughs> in. And then also Tomcat and Tommy. I haven't seen Tommy in a while. Oh, it's still around. Um, Ivor, Tanya, um, are you both going to present? Um, can you check if you're allowed to share your screen? Um, I am now, yeah. Just flip the switch. I found it. So, okay, that worked. And um, do you okay, want me so to give it a try as well. I think let's give it a quick try and see if yours works, because we don't want to have to uh, interrupt a smooth transition. Lovely. Works. So. Um, what I would like to do to our audience, however small they are, is um, welcome you to an earlier edition of the Josie Jug. We usually, every last Monday of the month at uh, 7 p.m. our local time. And um, I've been trying to find different slots that might work. Uh, we never know. But I would like to welcome uh two people um who are um the most probably the most senior people in the um, jakarta ee environment when in the, within the eclipse foundation which is where what you used to know as java ee has ended up and um they are going to tell us about the future of it so i'd like to introduce ivor grimstad who i've had an opportunity to meet when he was visiting last year and um, Tanya Obradovich, um, who are going to tell us about Jakarta EE 9 and beyond. And I'm going to hand over to them. Thank you so much. And I'll come to visit you next year because Eva was last year. So next year I'll come and visit. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming as well. So. <laughs> just uh, prepare the braai for us and uh, we'll be there. <laughs> braai is at my house. Right. So, 
Welcome to this talk on Jakarta E9 and beyond. Uh, my name is Ivar Grimstad, and I'm the uh, Jakarta E developer advocate at Eclipse Foundation. And with me, I have Tanya. Hey. Can you introduce yourself? Well, um, I got such a fabulous introduction from uh, Cornell that I kind of um, um, forgot about it. Uh, anyways, Tanya Obradovic, uh, that's my name, and I work for uh, Eclipse Foundation, very closely working with Ivar, and uh, we're working on uh, Jakarta EE specifications projects. And um, a little bit um, broader than that, uh, uh, related implementation projects as well. So Ivar, you yes, can, and, I and think, take it talk... over. Yes, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, I'll take it over. So this, this talk is uh, part of uh, our Jakarta E virtual tour 2020. It's also extending into 2021. So if we're a member of another jug, then uh, please just um, uh, reach out to us and we will add you to the schedule. So th this week we're visiting South Africa. And uh, the topic of, of the talk today will be some background about uh, Jakarta EE. Uh, then we'll uh, uh, talk about Jakarta EE 9 and a little bit about what's coming after Jakarta EE 9. So first of all, uh, Jakarta EE. And Jakarta EE, uh, as, as you probably know, it, it used to be developed as a Java EE or Java Enterprise Edition through the Java community process at Oracle. And uh, when Oracle in, uh, I think it was 2016, announced that they wanted to transfer Java EE to an open source foundation and selected Eclipse Foundation, the EE for J or Eclipse Enterprise for Java projects were created and all the technologies were moved over there. And based on these projects uh, in EE for J, we produced the Jakarta EE specifications. So that is how it's all interrelated. We have Java EE goes to Eclipse Foundation, becomes EE for J and Jakarta EE. And it's governed so by are, the Jakarta EE working group. How did we end it up with Jakarta EE as the name? Yeah, that's kind of interesting because if you remember from uh, back in the days, we had the Apache Jakarta project. And uh, that was a collection of Java projects at Apache Software Foundation. And uh, when we were trying to get it, uh, figure out a, a good name for, for Jakarta EE, we, uh, we asked uh, the Apache Foundation whether they could donate the Jakarta name to us, and they did. So that is how we got the Jakarta EE name. And it's, it's a name that has grown on us, and it's, uh, it's something we're very happy with. And it has kind of the history and, and, and uh, with the, all the Java projects at Apache Foundation and uh, so it's, it's pretty cool that it, we actually have this kind of cooperation between the, the largest two open source foundations. And we have a, a web page, and the URL is super simple to remember. It's jakarta.ee. So if you take one thing from this session, it should be jakarta.ee. Just type it into your browser and go from there. So what's Jakarta EE all about then? It's all about the specifications. And uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, specifications we are developing are, uh, it's a bunch of them. We have uh, them uh, uh, all listed here. You can see at the bottom, we have grayed out a couple of them. And these are technologies that are still working and still being used at large out there, but we don't see them as being developed very much further. They're stable as they are. And, and we also have uh, grouped them into uh, what we call profiles here. So you can see we have the Jakarta EE web profile, which is the specifications that are more targeted as uh, towards creating uh, web applications, uh, RESTful endpoints, and, and that kind of things. And you have the full platform, which contains the more enterprise heavy stuff like batch processing and uh, connectors to, uh, to other uh, legacy systems, for example. And uh, Jakarta is all about open specifications. And uh, I guess this is your cue to take over, Tanya. <laughs> okay. 
Um, thank you so much. So, um, open specifications, and of course, I was listening uh, um, uh, Eva so much that I didn't uh, uh, go to the open specification slide uh, right away. But uh, nevertheless, uh, open specifications is something that we're extremely um, happy about and proud about at the Open Source Foundation as uh, um, Eclipse Foundation is. And what we're trying actually to do with uh, open specifications is to kind of differentiate ourselves from the um, uh, 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 version of uh, openness that uh, uh, Oracle had with uh, JCP. So uh, with, uh, with uh, um, um, uh, open specifications uh, at the um, Eclipse Foundation, we're trying to encourage a code first approach, which means that only technologies that are kind of um, proven that are worthy of a specification of a standard, if you will, and are adopted potentially by the, um, by the developers uh, should make it into the um, Jakarta specification. We are also um, having more, far more collaborative uh, process um, uh, than what we used to have. And how, what do I mean by that? So during the JCP, we did have the um, uh, uh, a lead who was uh, kind of in charge of uh, making decisions. Right now, with the, uh, or actually with the, uh, Jakarta E specification, uh, we still have project leads, but they have no authority. Like it's it's uh, literally the uh, collective uh, work of the whole um, team that is working on a project. Um, to make decisions and, and um, uh, create the final specification. Uh, also, the documents and TCKs are um, completely open, uh, which certainly was not the case uh, uh, earlier, particularly in the domain of the TCKs. So um, I think uh, uh, if something, I mean, everything is very exciting for the developer community uh, in terms of the openness, but uh, um, developers are particularly excited uh, about having the um, TCKs, the technology compatibility kit uh, um, open, and everyone can go and see what exactly is required um, uh, to pass a test and voice their opinion in the case um, they have some disagreements. Also, the difference is that uh, Jakarta E specification, uh, uh, pro, uh, the Jakarta in Jakarta E specifications, um, uh, we don't require uh, or we don't have uh, one reference implementation that needs to uh, satisfy um, um, or, or implement all the specifications. We could have one or more compatible implementations. And um, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, very important that uh, the certification process is now self-certification. So we don't need to um, actually, um, uh, 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 no one has uh, uh, needs to send their code and uh, we need to do some tests and it, there is a, uh, nothing is a black box uh, from that perspective. People can, can certify uh, their products. Um, it's completely free of charge. Uh, but if they're interested to uh, become one of the compatible products and, 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 and follow up uh, and, and participate in, in development, of the specifications through the membership, they're more than welcome to, to exercise that as well. So uh, let me now just quickly see. Uh, OK, so I want to uh, um, actually uh, talk a little bit about the Jakarta E specification process. Um, uh, and if you look into here, um, if you disregard all the boxes that have the reviews, the development process is really, um, you could say, um, almost standard development process for um, any software development. And it certainly follows the uh, Eclipse development process. 
uh, if you want to, if you're familiar with that. So with the specification, um, with, the, um, you know, we added the review. So there is a, a absolute need for the um, uh, 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 proposal, uh, plan proposal and uh, the, the, the um, review, creation review. And all of these reviews are done with a, a particular uh, body, governance body uh, of the um, uh, Jakarta E working group, and that is uh, the specification committee. So the specification committee is uh, uh, there to um, uh, uh, do all the reviews. So creation review, plan review, um, uh, you will see progress review. And finally, before we uh, ratify, uh, uh, ratify a, a, final, a final specification, um, we need to go through the process of uh, release review. There is, for each of these reviews, there is uh, um, balloting involved and, 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 and voting of the uh, uh, members of the uh, uh, specification committee team, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, there is a time period and uh, uh, everyone needs to um, uh, past uh, uh, vote their opinion. And uh, that is the process of creating a final specification. So what exactly is uh, the specification? Ivar, do you want me to carry on a little bit more on, on this? Um, and then I will, I will transfer to you once we reach out demo. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so what is exactly specification? So specification is uh, consisting of three elements, really. It is the specification document. It is almost like a, a recipe, uh, if you will, or, or a text document that, that describes the uh, uh, specification. It is the uh, uh, API or the interface that is showing how um, uh, we should, uh, um, you know, what, what should be our interface for, for uh, the code. And then finally, uh, there is the um, technology compatibility kit, which uh, uh, is used to run uh, the code, um, test the code, um, and, and um, create the final uh, specification. To actually make sure that we have a, a code to run against something, we do need a compatible, um, at least one compatible implementation. So uh, all of this will uh, define actually the uh, final specification. So um, the compatible implementations that we have so far, um, and we're extremely uh, happy about those. As you can see, uh, there are quite a few. Um, most recent one is the uh, Fujitsu uh, Software Enterprise Application Platform. Um, but uh, you can see um, quite a few familiar uh, names here uh, and uh, vendors. So, um, you know. Uh, if you want to join uh, this list, uh, please uh, feel free uh, and uh, uh, go to the jakarta.ee .e .e compatibility page and there are all instructions uh, what needs to be done. So I think uh, now we are going to uh, just uh, uh, tell you a touch about Jakarta E9 and uh, the fact that we're trying to, um, oh, well, actually to, to let you know that Jakarta E9 is already uh, available. Um, we have, uh, uh, as, as pointed out, alphas, betas, milestone. Uh, we had a celebration for the first milestone sometimes in June, I believe, Ivar, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah in June and uh, uh, release candidates are available um, uh, almost uh, uh, every night, I think now uh, at yeah. this point. And, and, and this is all good, but uh, shouldn't we have a look at the code as well? So oh yeah, I, I think how, so. How E9 works. Yeah, so, so Ivar, uh, if you wanna take it over for that part, that would be fantastic. So let's 
jump into the uh, demo. And what I'm actually going to do now is to show you two uh, implementations here that is, they are probably not the first one you think of when you think about Jakarta EE, but, and that is Apache Tom, uh, Tomcat and Eclipse Jetty. And you, these are not uh, Jakarta EE full compatible implementations or anything, but they do implement some of the specifications. And one of the specifications they uh, implement is the serverless specification, which is used uh, around the world in these products. So uh, what I'm going to do is to show you how uh, Tomcat and Jetty already now uh, supports uh, Jakarta E9. And as you may know, the uh, Jakarta E9 uh, will uh, uh, be compiled using uh, Java SE8. And that just means that the APIs are are compiled on uh, on uh, SE8 source level, and uh, the the uh, products need to be, be able to run on eight, but there are nothing stopping them from running on on anything newer. So here I'm using uh, Java 15 just to, to uh, show you in this demo, and you can see I'm I'm using the previous release candidate of Jakarta E9, which is available. There is also an RC3 out there, and I'll, I'll use that in a, in a demo later. So, so this is my POM file. I'm just pointing out the, the uh, version 9 of the uh, Jakari uh, APIs. And the code is, as you would uh, expect, uh, it's a super simple servlet. Uh, it, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's using the Jakarta Im import. So you can see here, there are no Java X namespaces left. It's the, the Jakarta namespace. So, so uh, the, the servlet has been moved over there. And it's just a servlet saying, uh, greetings from uh, Jakarta E9. So let's try and run this on, on these two uh, implementations. And I've actually just uh, uh, pre-built this and uh, I'll, I'll run it first on Tomcat here. And I'll just copy the, the jar I, I built. So I'm, I'm copying, you can see here, I, I'm copying the uh, Solid Duke war coming from this sample. Uh, you get the URL to the, uh, the code and get over afterwards. I'm just copying it into the uh, web apps folder here, and you should see that it's uh, it's uh, deploying it and, and starting it up here in uh, Tomcat. And it's, uh, the same thing I'll actually do here in in uh, uh, Jetty. So just copy it here, and and it picks it up and and deploys it. So let's look at how this looks in the uh, browser. So here, here I'm, uh, I have uh, Tomcat, the milestone seven for, of, of Tomcat 10. It, it's actually a couple of, I think they have uh, released milestone nine or something, but you need to be on Tomcat 10 to, uh, to run Jakarta namespace. And be aware, if you're on Tomcat eight now and you wanna upgrade later, and sometimes you, you go into 10, well, then you need to do the namespace change because Tomcat is coming with it. So, let, let's go to the, uh, the application I just uh, deployed and it's called Servlet Duke. And you can see here it says, uh, greetings from uh, Servlet 5. And the same thing here in, in Jetty, you can see I, I now uh, deployed the uh, uh, Servlet Duke and I can go and say hello. And it says, greetings from Servlet 5. So, so you, you can already now try it out in, uh, in Tomcat and Jetty if you like. And there are more products, and I'll demo some more of them uh, later. But obviously, Eclipse Glassfish uh, version 6 uh, supports uh, Jakarta E9. It will support both the full profile and the web profile. Uh, and um, you also see uh, Tomcat and Jetty here. Uh, and then the, all, all these vendors have their products like Payara uh, Open, and Open Liberty, uh, Tommy, Wildfly, Piranha, Jersey, et cetera. And there are more. So, so um, uh, these are, these are the projects that are already available out there in some version supporting the Jakarta namespace. And if your product is supporting Jakarta namespace or you've moved your application over or you want to get listed or get some attention, just tweet with the hashtag uh, embrace Jakarta. Or uh, Rory, you can use Instagram as well. We will try to look at that hashtag. Uh, just uh, uh, tag your, your food picture with embrace Jakarta and we'll look at it. And 
uh, so Jakarta in nine, the, uh, the, the three pillars of this release is to lower the entry barriers. It's to create a platform for innovation and it's uh, it provide easy migration from uh, previous versions. And let's look at the, uh, the um, uh, different here and, and the lower entry barriers. Uh, the steps we're doing to, uh, to achieve this is to, as I said, we're removing some deprecated uh, technologies. And uh, the, the, that is the, the old uh, uh, SOAP and, and web service APIs. They're, they are removed from the platform, so we don't need to, to uh, implement them in newer versions. And also, the, uh, the, we were removing some uh, core bus stuff, getting rid of it, because uh, that's, that's kind of uh, making it harder for new players on the market to uh, come with a new application server. We are uh, creating a platform ready for in innovation. And uh, uh, what we're doing now is to, we do the name switch, uh, switch. So we kind of we, we rip the cord to the old uh, technology, the old Java X namespace, and the, there are no limitations anymore. So now it's open for innovation, and we want to have a, a, a continuous innovation in the different teams doing the code first approach that Tanya talked about earlier. And we also want to make it easy to migrate from uh, uh, Jakarta EE previous versions uh, and, and Java EE earlier versions to Jakarta EE 9. And since this namespace switch is such a big thing, we're limiting what we're delivering in this release. So basically, it means that Jakarta EE 9 is more or less the same as Java EE 9, uh, 8, uh, except the namespace switch. And that is to to, to make it easier for people to migrate over to the new platform uh, and then be able to uh, to innovate on this platform further in the future. Because if you added a lot of stuff, you wouldn't know what was actually causing your problems if you got into problems. But, but now you know it's the namespace switch. We're also creating some uh, some uh, trans... Uh, there are projects at Eclipse Foundation uh, called the Eclipse Transformer for Jakarta which uh, does this on bytecode level to, to uh, transform your projects. And some of the vendors are actually using this in their runtimes in order to so support the new namespace. So the namespace change. The um, Java X to Jakarta uh, switch. And I see we have some uh, uh, questions in the chat uh, regarding the batch specification. I'll, I'll take that later when I talk about batch after Jakarta E9. So just stay tuned and I'll try to answer a question as good as I can. So rather than me saying you have to switch from uh, Jakarta to or Java X to Jakarta, it's uh, better to actually show it in the code. So let's do the namespace switch and uh, uh, look at how it will look in the code. So I have a very simple application here. It's as you see on uh, Jakarta E8. And before I go any further, I'll actually explain what I'm going to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this REST Duke application First, I'm going to run it as it is with Jakarta E8 on Glassfish 5. Uh, then I'm going to, to do the namespace switch and, and uh, move it over to uh, Jakarta E6 and run it there. And also run it on Apache Tommy uh, just to use another implementation as well. So the, uh, as you see, it's, it's Jakarta E8 uh, here. And the uh, code, as you would uh, expect, is uh, super simple. It's uh, also here. It's a hello world to Jakarta 8. And it just says, uh, hello uh, to Jakarta 8. And uh, th this is all uh, there is. So there is the uh, JaxRS application. It's the uh, simple uh, Java object that gets serialized to JSON. And it's the hello world endpoint. Let's just uh, build this one and uh, also uh, deploy it to uh, Glassfish 5. So here I have uh, Glassfish 5 running. We'll just add, add it to the artifacts there. And 
RHVB and let's deploy it. So while it's deploying here, you should see what you expect. So there it's deployed, it's up and running. Let's go back to our GlassFish server. This is a uh, version five running on, on port 8082 here. And I have this uh, REST Duke application that we can say Duke says hello to Jigari 8, which is what we uh, just deployed. Now, if I were to deploy this application to uh, GlassFish 6, it would fail because of the uh, namespace. Because uh, GlassFish 6 is uh, uh, on, on the Jakarta namespace. So let's upgrade this one. So I'll go in here and I'll change this one to uh, the uh, latest release candidate of the APIs. I'll uh, update the uh, Maven project there. Oh, come on. There we go, reload. And I'll go and look at the uh, code here. And as, as you see, it now doesn't compile anymore because of the JavaX namespace. So let's fix that. And the IDE will actually help you with uh, most of this, but some of them where there are uh, different uh, alternatives, you have to choose uh, the correct one. And let's do the same with the uh, hello endpoint. And there you go. Fix the Eureka scope. And I think there is one more produces. There you go. And then the most important thing, we have to say hello to Jakarta 9 So here I've done this. I'll take this one, add it to the um, uh, glass V6. There we go. And uh, deploy it. And while it's uh, deploying on GlassFish, I'll go ahead and deploy it to Tommy as well. There we go. Let's see, it's deployed on, on GlassFish. So if we go to the uh, GlassFish 6, running on 8081 here, and, and see RESTUC, we should say uh, hello to uh, Jakarta 9 which is those. And also it should have been uh, deployed to uh, Tommy as well. And I think uh, this one has another context, but it says hello to Jakarta 9 So uh, by doing this name switch, it's more or less a, a, a replace of the imports and, and the, the uh, version in the POM file. And then uh, as you see, it, it runs nicely on GlassW6 and Tommy. And you could also run it on, on other implementations, but I won't show that here. That's uh, Jakarta E9. Let's uh, look at what's happening beyond. And first of all, we will release a Jakarta E9.1 release directly after uh, 9, which will uh, require Java SE 11 support. There are multiple reasons why we're doing this, but uh, the, uh, the most important one is that in order to be able to release this year, we, we needed to remove the 11 requirement uh, uh, because of how the TCKs are, are built up. We want to look at the release cadence. And uh, uh, from various sources around here and there, uh, it looks like the community wants a typically a one-year release cadence. So we're hoping to establish a time-based release cadence for Jakarta E that will uh, release a new version uh, every uh, year. Uh, we want to decouple the specification a little bit so it's easier to, to uh, launch them separately as well as uh, uh, making it easier to release uh, these uh, platform releases without uh, having so many dependencies between the specifications. And uh, when I said release cadence previously, that is for the platform, for the individual specifications such as the Jakarta REST or the servlet uh, we want them to release as often as they can. And, and the platform will just pick up whatever is, is uh, suitable for that platform version release. We want to set up some strategy of Java SE version so it's predictable what version of Java the future versions of, of uh, Jakarta EE will support. So, so you don't have to guess or see whatever comes at the end. We want to have some predictability here. 
we want to make CDI uh, more overreaching, maybe even uh, uh, look at potentially getting rid of EJB or replace it by CDI uh, alternatives. Uh, we're looking at a CDI light version and, uh, uh, and many of the specs that haven't, uh, uh, aren't using CDI fully today uh, are looking at doing it in, in later releases. We're looking at some potential uh, new APIs. The uh, Jakarta NoSQL is a potential candidate as a, uh, a new specification in the platform. The Jakarta MVC is another one that uh, just recently uh, released a version one of one. We want to look at some sort of configuration mechanism that is uh, on, on uh, used uh, in the entire platform. And microprofile config is uh, one that is uh, probably the most uh, obvious one to choose, but uh, we need to kind of set the, uh, just decide how we're going to do this. We're looking at possible updates to uh, a lot of APIs and Jakarta security is one of them. Uh, the version 1.0 that came in, Jakarta, in Java E8 and has been carried on in Jakarta E8 and Jakarta E9 is uh, very simple and, and it lays a very good foundation for what's to come. And we want to add support for OpenID Connect, uh, OAuth, uh, JSON Web Tokens, uh, et cetera, et cetera, on this uh, specification. Jakarta concurrency needs some uh, CDI alignment, some uh, updates, to, and maybe some new annotations to make it simpler to configure. Jakarta messaging, uh, could potentially add support for more protocols such as uh, MQP, Kafka, MQTT, uh, and, and et cetera. And also uh, continue the work we started uh, with the previous version on CDI alignment. For Jakarta uh, persistence, we could look at some caching, uh, standardized caching mechanism like JCAS, for example, uh, make some updates to the uh, persistent query language to make it easier to use. Uh, maybe support multi-tenancy uh, and et cetera. For Jakarta REST, uh, it, it makes sense to, to continue the CDI alignment, uh, look at the uh, Java SE bootstrap mechanisms, and also the uh, maybe add support for uh, multi-part form data. And there are more specifications, such as uh, updates to Jakarta batch, Jakarta mail, Jakarta transactions, faces, et cetera, et cetera. And here, I think it's, um, it's uh, I, I can take the, the were some qu questions in chat about the uh, batch spec in Jakarta E. Uh, and the question is, would spring batch uh, be a compliant implementation? And I don't think so, but uh, I know that uh, spring batch was very much of a um, inspiration when Jakarta Batch was made. So, so I, I think the they are so similar that you can more or less move from one to the other without really changing your code very much. And before we sum up, and I uh, hand over to you, Tanya, I also have a question. Uh, wait, did I hear properly? No SOAP implementation. <laughs> does that mean that the old SOAP web services won't run? No, no, it doesn't mean that. What it means is that SOAP is a stable technology. It's not going to change very much in the future. So we don't need to carry on working on it in the future. But of course, the platform will still support it. OK. So thank you so much, Ivar. I'll try to quickly summarize. So the Jakarta E9 uh, is the uh, release that we're expecting. Um, well, we're targeting it for November 20th. And uh, um, it is the release that is going to, uh, as Ivar pointed out, lower entry barriers. So we want as many um, uh, vendors as, okay. Thank I, you. I just shared the screen for you, so you don't have to bother. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, as many new uh, vendors to uh, come into play and be uh, able to uh, implement Jakarta, specific, Jakarta in, uh, 9 and uh, beyond specifications. 
Um, we want this platform to be completely stable uh, for people so they can migrate uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, well, not just migrate, but they can start first uh, to uh, innovate. And of course, with this uh, uh, name change, doing it in this particular release, we wanna make it very easy for people to migrate. Um, so that is about uh, the uh, Jakarta E9. Uh, then uh, the links that we would really love for you to um, memorize, um, they are jakarta.ee. Um, you can go to the GitHub and look um, everything under Eclipse-E4J, which is a um, enterprise edition for Java uh, projects. Uh, not, it, it includes not just specification projects, but related uh, uh, implementation projects as well. Um, you can see tons of blogs um, under Jakarta uh, EE, uh, Jakarta blogs, and then uh, weekly updates from Ivar, uh, hashtag Jakarta EE. Um, you, can, you can look for that. Uh, and my monthly uh, updates uh, um, uh, uh, that are published also on Jakarta blog. And then what we want to put emphasis on that we're going to make a, a big celebration of the uh, Jakarta E9 release. Uh, and we're preparing for you Jakarta One live stream on December 8. Uh, we are finalizing the program uh, uh, for this event. Uh, uh, and we are planning to publish it uh, uh, really shortly. But in the meanwhile, uh, I'm sure most of the people remember how successful this event was last year. So please don't forget to uh, sign up and support us uh, um, with the Jakarta One live stream in December. And there will be cake, won't it? And there will be cake. There will be so many other interesting things. But uh, uh, if you attended our uh, milestone release, uh, you remember that uh, uh, one of the small requirements was a cupcake and it was a relatively small celebration. Now we want to make it a big celebration. <laughs> so this celebration will require a cake, not just a cupcake. So be ready for that. Um, uh, let us know if you make a cake, uh, your own cake in celebration of Jakarta uh, um, uh, E9. Uh, show us your videos and we'll come up with the ideas how we can reward people who are celebrating with us. We should probably come up with a hashtag that Rory can use in his Instagram feed. Yay. Uh, or or if, he, if, he goes for, if he goes for Facebook, you never know. <laughs> yeah. And food. It's, it's food. So Rory, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, cake on so Instagram. I'll have to definitely. plan a cheat day for December 8th. Yes, I'm a, I'm a running gag now. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay, fantastic. We've got a lady in our complex that bakes the most awesome cakes. So, um, oh wow! I will I will commission her, <laughs> and um, I will I will send snapshots of my progress through the cake. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> We will have some um, uh, either flags or something that you put on the cake so you can decorate even further. Yes, now I'll, I'll, I think I'll, I'll, I'll see if she can do something with a logo. Oh, wow. Great. That's <laughs> fantastic. That's amazing. So um, uh, I am hope, do we have, we don't have any more questions, not at least in the Zoom chat. Uh, but this was fantastic experience. The only downside, it's, vir it's virtual. So um, hopefully, uh, slow, uh, shortly, uh, where shortly is really relevant term nowadays, uh, we'll be able to do it face to face um, and uh, meet in person. I would love that. Yes, yeah, we definitely we want to come back to uh, Johannesburg. It's one of my favorite places. So, oh, lovely. So we will, we will, we will invite you and. Um, uh, in the hopes that uh, uh, in-person conferences will become a thing again. Please, and, uh, please, I, I need, I need those human beings. 
thank you, Carol, thank you for, for your time. Yeah. Thank you for your time. And um, good luck with this uh, uh, very important work. It was literally like uh, you, you, you rescued um, Java EE from extinction. And, well, they, um, they, 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 they tore it from the hands of a villain and gave it to someone else. Yes. Yes. And um, it, it looks healthy and viable. And um, um, it's uh, where a lot of people are still spending their, their energy. And um, uh, there's going to be a lot of work in the future where people will go search and replace uh, uh, Java X dot something with Jakarta X dot something and um, find out that, uh, oh, thanks to some great work, their life is a lot easier than migrating from one version of WebSphere to another version of WebSphere. <laughs> um, because that's something that I don't wish upon my worst enemy. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to do it too many times. <laughs> well, so, let's, let's um, hope. That's what we aim for, right? Yes. So thank you all. Uh, thanks for the audience. And um, uh, we will be um, joining you on the 8th of December. Thank, Thank you so much. See you there. Cheers, everyone. See you. Bye bye, everybody. Bye for now. Bye. Be yes. safe and be healthy. Yes. Bye.